All right, welcome back, everybody. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the tricky thing, and that is the traffic pattern. Now, I'm taking a look down here. We've arrived at our aircraft, or I should say our airport. This is a Wyndham Airport. This is Kilo India Juliet Delta, for those of you following along at home. This is a great airport because it doesn't have a control tower, but it's just big enough to cause trouble. So when we land at an airport, there's really a lot of steps involved to get it right and to make sure things are safe. And we're going to look at this only on a basic level. When we want to get fancy, we'll get fancy a little bit later on. So what do I mean by all this? Well, the first things first is we have to figure out how to get down to the correct runway which means we need to figure out what correct runway we're supposed to be using for this particular airport. In this particular case, we happen to know that the wind is coming out of the north. So if I were to actually look at my little directional gyro, you can see that if a wind is coming out of the north, the runway will have to face that direction. Taking a look at the runway, there's really only one runway that is facing towards the north right now, and that's going to be that runway right there, which means to land, I'm going to have to come down here, take a left and a left, and then land down here. Now, all airports and general with a couple exceptions, of course, you usually use left turns to line you up with the runway in a special thing called the traffic pattern. There's much, much better videos out there that demonstrate the traffic pattern. So for today, I'm going to try to keep it as simple as possible. Basically, a traffic pattern is a rectangular path for all traffic to enter and exit into an airport. It's a really, really safe method to go ahead and throw. I'm not going to go through the individual vocabulary. I'm just going to show you a basic way to do it. So the first thing is, is I've gained an awful lot of altitude and all this kind of fun tooling around. So I'm just going to go ahead and lose a little bit using this long, tight spiral. You want to be very cautious with these because you can stall. Ha <laughs> ha, good review, right? Now notice I'm going plenty fast enough, but it's just that I'm overdriving the plane. This would be a very, very aggressive maneuver that you probably never used. So now the first thing is, is we need to figure out what altitude we're going to be traveling at now that we know what runway we're going to be using. The altitude you want to be at generally is almost always 1,000 feet above the ground level for the airport that you're visiting. In this case, the altitude is, one, is 247 feet at the airport, which means our pattern altitude is going to be 1,247 feet. By the way, you did make sure you reset your altimeter by pressing the B key, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fly downwind parallel with the runway on my left at that altitude. Now you're probably sitting there going, how do I know it's parallel? Well, if the runway is facing north, then south would be parallel. Some of you, of course, will be using sophisticated computer systems like, you know, the BG-1000s that'll actually make this even easier. So now you can see I'm now running parallel to that runway down below me. You can actually see the big old number tree six right there. When you're in this part of the pattern, it's usually a really good idea to go ahead and put down one notch of flaps. Don't put down that notch of flaps, by the way, unless you are going slow enough that you're not gonna take your flaps off. Slow enough in this aircraft is basically 90 knots. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit here cruising along. It's not too parallel, I'm awfully close to the runway. But again, this is just a basic demonstration. Keeping myself at about 247 feet. I'm gonna go ahead and pause right here. When you get to a position so that the runway is exactly ending at your nine o'clock, we can start descending. Our descent here is gonna be about 500 feet per minute. It's also a great time to go ahead and set your second notch of flaps. Again, this is all general, but it works well for me. It's also a good time to start getting yourself at your approach speed. The approach speed on this aircraft is 60. Right now I'm doing 40, so I'm right about to stall the plane. I gotta get some power in pretty darn quick. Another thing I gotta to do too is go ahead and set my mixture control a little bit higher than it is right now. Lovely. So as soon as I unpause, I'm gonna go ahead and knock that second notch of flaps down, and I'm going to get my speed at about 60 and a 500 feet per minute descent. Let's go ahead and bring that nose down a little bit. Like I said, I need a little bit of power. Delightful. Per okay, actually we want to swing to the left a little bit. We're not really parallel. Remember that instrument's only as accurate as you allow it to be. i reduce my power a little bit. Again, start playing with the trim. There we go, it's a little fast, a little fast. If we go too fast, of course, we're gonna run into the problem where we take up too much room here. I'm gonna go ahead and pause real quick, take a look behind me. All right, the runway's out of sight, not unusual. And now what I'm doing is I'm basically pulling this little line out, giving myself enough room to be able to turn to face the runway directly. Again, this is a super basic version of the traffic pattern. There's really nothing too, too fancy about this. Usually you have a good spot on the ground. There's other complications, but I'm just not worrying about that for today. We're just looking at basics. Cool. So the runway is about 45 degrees to our tail. So I'm going to go ahead and execute a very gentle turn. This is a very dangerous corner because the aircraft tends to be going very slow and you tend to have a very loaded plane when you take this corner. So I'm going to go ahead and put the end of the runway perpendicular. 
Okay, I can see it right there. And now what I'm going to do, this is called the base leg, by the way, is now I'm going to turn one more time to face the runway directly. As you're doing this, you should be keeping your uh, vertical speed at about 500 feet per minute and your speed at about 60. As soon as I get out of this turn, I'm going to go ahead and put down my last notch of flaps, which I just did a moment ago. Now we're on our final approach. I'm ever so slightly too high here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm simply going to line up the aircraft and get ready for my landing. So to land this aircraft, it's pretty straightforward. I want to keep my speed at about 60 knots most of the way down. You can see I start getting slow. I can just give myself just a little bit more power. Remember, the power takes a moment to catch in. If you start to see that nose getting kind of high, that's going to be a little dangerous. Remember, you can always tap spacebar to change your field of view to have a better look at the end of the runway. Personally, I always tell people use a fixed perspective. Now, this runway has what they call a displace threshold, which are these little arrows. They tell us we can't actually land until we get to that big old number. 36 there. So you can see my speed is 60. I'm getting a little high. I'm just going to reduce power a little bit, nose down. Remember, your flaps are going to help slow you down here. That looks pretty good. There's a big old tree six. I always put that number basically a couple inches right off my little dashboard there. Once we get close to the ground, go ahead and pull the throttle to zero. Get very close to the ground, level off, bleed some speed, pull the nose up just a teeny tiny bit, and wait for the kudunk. And now we're down on the ground. Apply brakes gingerly. Brakes on aircraft are very expensive. So and now you can see we put ourselves down on the ground from which we came. Not too bad. Now it's simply a matter of going ahead and bringing yourself back to where you took off. Or if we want to, we could take off again. We don't really have enough room right here to do that. So hopefully this series is helpful as far as giving everybody the absolute basics with this. If this is something I should pursue a little later on, kind of let me know. Otherwise, you know, I'll probably experiment with some of the other aircraft. As always, enjoy.